Wonderful. Well, greetings, everyone. It's today we get to hear from Mark Emanuel. So thank you, Mark, for taking time out of your busy schedule to connect with us. And um, let's just simply start by asking you to tell us a bit about yourself and a bit about your company. Yeah, well, my name is Mark Emanuel. I uh, originally from San Antonio. I've been in Omaha for the past 13 years now. Uh, the company that I'm working for right now is the Dundee Dell. It's um, 57, 5007 Underwood Avenue. Uh, it's a infamous, famous place, if you will, for fish and chips. And we've been around for pretty close to 100 years. Uh, this is a new take on it. We are uh, elevating the experience a little bit. But, of course, we still have our super delicious fish and chips. And some other really fun favorites and it's just a really good time. Beautiful, beautiful. So you've been around for quite a while and the Dundee name in the Omaha metro area is certainly known. Um, so there's probably a branding strategy that you're using there, yes? Definitely, we're doing a, a little rebranding, a little work with the, the Pine Room, which is our whiskey side. We've uh, kind of split the two of them. So it's a little bit more of a, upscale area for the whiskey and then just the the fun fish and chips and other great fare on the other side as well. Well, people love to gather when there's food, right? So it's probably a, a fun gathering place for, for folks. I'm just curious, um, as you're thinking about now um, planning your growth, and you, I heard you reference the whiskey side of it, um, what seems to be the the intention around the kind of client or customer that you're attracting these days? Um, we really love the neighborhood. We're right in the heart of Dundee and love all of our Dundee neighbors. And, you know, just the 35 to 45 age is probably like our target demographic. We're looking for families, of course, and kids are so much fun and great and liven the place up and more so on the uh, the fish and chips, uh, the restaurant side, not so much on the, the whiskey side, of course, but. Sure. sure. Love it. How long have you been in your role? Uh, I've been in my role for just about four months now. Okay. So you're new to your leadership role there. Um, I'm curious about the areas of focus or growth that you are um, interested in right now or what you've experienced here recently that you'd like to share with us? Uh, well, right now we're really focusing in on, in on our happy hour. We're closed Mondays and Tuesdays, but we offer a happy hour the other five days of the week. So three to six, we've got some really fun specials, things on the menu that you can't get any other time. Of course, some drink discounts and just trying to get out to the community. We're reaching out to some schools as they're coming back into session, trying some teachers, some nurses, things of that nature. Just trying to fill in that, that little gap there. The, the three to five is kind of a slow time for us since we're trying to fill that out a little bit. Got it. What, what attracted you to this kind of work if you've been in it just four months into it? I'm just curious. Well, I've been, I came up uh, with Starbucks. I worked with them for about 18 years. And then after the pandemic, I actually came and got a job in the, the whiskey side of the Pine Room. And uh, so I bartended on the whiskey side for about six months. Don't ask too much about scotch. I've forgotten everything. But uh, then I took over another leadership role for the same company at the Birch and Beer Garden. And I was in position there. And I still am positioned there as a general manager for about a year, going on a year and a half. And then I had the opportunity to kind of dual manage. So I stepped back in as a leadership role on this side. And it's just such a, I mean, it really is a fun place. And I really stand by the product. Our food is so good. We have a great staff and just really trying to deliver the best for our customers. Nice, nice, that customer experience. So you referenced a great staff. What kinds of things do you look for, qualities of uh, potential employees or teammates? A great question. Um, and it changes every day, I feel. Uh, dependability, of course, super important. Outgoingness, just, and like sincerity. I really am like a, a staff that knows how to talk to customers, but knows how to connect with the customer and not just 
says whatever, but actually gets to know their customers, builds regulars, and gives them the really great experience. Nice, nice. What do you think that you do uniquely to foster a positive, fun work environment for people? Uh, well, I'm a little bit ridiculous, believe it or not. Um, just making sure that my staff is having a good time and not too much fun, of course, but if they're having a good time, I feel like the customer's going to have a good time. And I lead by example, I'm out there greeting tables, busing, hosting, doing anything and everything, anything I can do to make their job a little bit easier so they can spend a little bit more time focusing on the customer. And really, like I said, just like delivering that the experience that we want to deliver, which is great food and great customer service. Absolutely. And leadership is about removing obstacles and barriers for them to be their best. No doubt. No doubt. Definitely. I'm just curious, what might be some learnings that you've gained or maybe some surprises as you've um, launched this new career now in managing this establishment? Um, well, I mean, there's just so much. I don't, don't even know where to start. Every day I learn four or five new things and new ways to do things and for me personally, what I try to do is figure out how to be the most efficient in what I'm doing so I can lead my team through the efficiency. And then once again, it goes back to you can spend that time then with your customer. So anything that I can do to make my job easier, my team's job easier is always a win. Absolutely. Make it easy. That is a key. You know, sometimes we complicate business more than it needs to be. Um, do we? And, and, yeah, right. And, and really that, that experience that they have is the marketing. That is the story you want folks to be out there telling and that we want it to be a good thing. Exactly. I get more, more word of mouth is, is by far the best way. It's my favorite way to do marketing is just people telling other people what a great time they had and bringing them in. And we're pushing private events now too. And I feel like that's always a great way. I've had lots of success in my other jobs with that where you bring in a, a group of 100 people, they have a great time, and then next thing you know, they're coming back and they're telling people, and not even for events necessarily, but just the day-to-day. -day. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm curious, with the demands of um, your leadership role there, how do you integrate your personal life and the demands of running a business? Any insight there for uh, us? God, I wish. Uh, that is probably one of my biggest struggles is finding that balance. And it's just figuring out tricks that I can do that efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. The less or the easier I can make my job, the less time that it takes. Anything I can do to shave off even a couple minutes here on like an order or something. So doing a lot of front end work, setting up ordering systems and things like that. So that way, Hopefully, it'll pay dividends in the future. And so instead of taking an hour to do an order and inventory and things like that, I can have knocked out in 20 or 30 minutes. Nice. You, you referenced that you are always learning something new every day. Um, every if day. you were to start, let's say, four months back and you're to start this again, what might be some key uh -huh. learning insights that you've, that you've bumped into? Oh... I mean, as always, it's about staffing, building the right team, really finding that right candidate and asking the right questions, making sure they are trained right and they know what my expectations are and the expectations of the company are for them. And it just makes everyone's life easier if, A, they know what they, their expectations are and they know that they can achieve them and how to achieve them. I think that's monumentous. Monumental? Yeah. Yeah, both. I like both of those words. <laughs> yeah, it, it is true. Clarifying expectations uh, and managing expectations, and then they'll know what actions to take to get the results that you want. And when you aren't getting the results that you want, when we usually self-reflect as leaders, as managers, we can see that there's probably an opportunity for us to get more clear in either our training or our expectations. Yep. Constant improvement. It's never... The job is never done. You're always making it better and more enjoyable for everyone. Absolutely. Better, just, better experience all around. I'm curious if you had advice for your younger self and you can decide what your younger self is. What would be some personal and or professional advice that you might give yourself? 
Um, that is a really great question. So good, I can't even come up with an answer right now. Um, you know, I guess just really think through everything and glad this isn't live. Uh, it's all good. Sure. Are, are you a risk taker in your decision making? How do you even come about making decisions to, let's say, even start this business? Uh, yeah, yes, so I definitely. I would say I am a risk taker. Um, I try to do my best to make the decision that's going to negate as much of the risk as possible. But if you don't take risks, you don't really move forward. And I mean, there is always a little bit of gamble in everything that you do. And so, but at the same time, negate, negating some of that, the variables and making it a little bit easier to manage the risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And always taking in new information, right? So we might have a plan and um, we might need to go to plan B, plan C, or take in new information and, and mid-course adjust. Exactly. I Being nimble and pivoting, always a strong leadership quality and necessity, definitely. And what worked yesterday might be the absolute worst idea today. So just having the, the wisdom and the knowledge to know when your plan is not working and going back and revisiting it and bringing the team along and figuring out what it is that I can do different and better for them and what they can do different and better for me. Yeah, for sure. I'm just curious, what might be some maybe common misconceptions that, that people have out there about running a business? Um, that it's always fun and not all, all the work in the world. Uh, what I find interesting is that, you know, like I said earlier, like I'm always learning something new. There's always a new challenge, which really drives me. I love, 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 love. Like my days are never anything at all the same. There's always a new challenge, new opportunity, new thousand things to learn, new way to try to approach a strategy. It's great. So I think going back to being nimble, super important whenever you are opening up a restaurant or a business and having a plan, but being willing to adjust that plan and knowing when to adjust it and when to stay the course. Yeah, nice, nice. I'm curious about um, how you learn. What's the most effective way that you learn? Are you a visual learner or kinesthetic or how do you learn best? Definitely, definitely hands-on, getting in there, doing the work. And for me, that helps me lead my team also because if I'm not in there, doing what it is that needs to be done, I don't know how to tell my team how to do it. I can't figure out the most effective way to do it, figure out what's working the best, what's not working, what is just extra labor that we don't even need to be doing. And so super important for me to be close to the work, but at the same time, know when it is to take a step back and see the big picture and figure out if that task that I'm having my servers do, do we really need to do A, B, and C? Can we skip, do B and maybe we try D and we more than make up for A and C, if that makes sense at all. It does. I can hear that you're about testing and measuring what works and let's experiment with that a bit. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a way to stay relevant, certainly to make sure that you're meeting your customers' needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how about, um, the financial mastery of running a business. Um, is that everything that you thought it would be or is there an opportunity to learn and grow in that area as well as a business owner? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, you know the percentages that you're going for, what your goals are, but maybe you have this great idea for a special and it doesn't work out. And so then you're down on that, but, but definitely can always, as with everything, keep learning and growing and really with the business side of it, really try to keep those numbers tight. And even though something's only going to cost X amount of dollars, which seems like small, if you can save those couple bucks here and there, it really adds up in the end. Yeah, most definitely. What, what does your work day look like? Because you said you love the variety and no one day is really the same as the other. 
Oh. No, they are all totally different. I mean, I'm normally up by six or seven, uh, checking emails, setting up parties, talking to the owner. Um, he's very hands-on, which I really, really appreciate. Wonderful mentor. Uh, and then, you know, 10 or 11, I'll head into the shop and hang out for lunch, make sure we've got all the prep going and everything, and stink around for uh, dinner service. Sometimes I even slip out a little bit, a couple hours in there, but most of the time I just hang out and get some other paperwork done, and then 8 or 9 o'clock, head on home. Nice, nice. You mentioned that um, you've got a mentor in, in, your, in your business owner. Are there other people in your life that have been mentors? And maybe what areas are you playing that forward? Um, well, one of my peers in, at Starbucks is, was a super large mentor, Carrie. And I've taken so much that she's taught me. And I continue to use all of that. Um, then Andrew from the Pine Room side, he was the old general manager of the entire restaurant. Um, learned so much from him about running a bar, which I'd been new to. I'd never even really worked in a bar before two years ago. So how to work with those cost of goods and what percentages you need. And I mean, just how to even mix drinks, honestly. Mm -hmm. So he's been very, very helpful. And yeah. Nice. If you're to look five years in the future, what does that path look like for you, Mark? What do you think that's going to be? Oh, I would love to be in a almost district manager kind of role, a couple more restaurants underneath my direct oversight and just doing, continuing to grow this business and new concepts and really making Omaha, elevating the food experience just citywide. Is Omaha a growing area in the region that you're in? Say that again. I said, is Omaha growing in the region, in the market that you're in? It definitely is, yes. The Dundee is kind of finishing a, uh, it's kind of like growing up and it's becoming more family focused, which I really, really appreciate. And yeah, it's great. Nice, nice. What else would be important for um, our listeners to learn about you running a business or, or even just um, the services that you provide? Um, I think it's super important to realize going in that you have to be dedicated to it and you've got to find the right staff. You've got to lead by at least for me, it works best to lead by example. I do realize there are other management styles and some of them work better in different situations and and being super nimble. Yeah, that is um, something that we discovered over the last few years, isn't it? When, when we can't always control the things that happen in life, though we can always choose mm -hmm. how we're going to respond. Exactly. Yeah. And so if I were a member of your team, um, what would be the way that you would um, coach me and encourage me and, and maybe validate me for my, my personal growth? Um, well, I would obviously depend on your role, but I would let you know what you were doing right, uh, what you could, if there's anything that you could work on. And I mean, just positive and continuous feedback and not always positive but continuous feedback it's with anything if you don't know your expectations if you don't have any feedback you don't know if you're doing a good job or not and so you're gonna even if you're trying to do the best job and you don't know what the goal is you're not going to reach the goal so con constant communication i find works really well sometimes my employees think i communicate too much but I don't think it's possible. Like, there's a time and a place for communication, but as long as it is constructive and positive, I think there's no negative to it. Yeah, it's both learning how to give and receive, right? That that constructive. Most definitely. For sure. Uh huh. And yeah. I definitely get some constructive criticism from my staff too, which I always appreciate. But. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, if we have that exchange relationship, that trusting relationship. Um, you know, that's where that, that um, I, I call it that emotional investment in the team to become even better happens when that trust is there. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful. Yeah, and definitely team building is humongous also. Yeah. Investing in people is always a great investment. That's what I like to say as a growth strategy because <laughs> you know when when leaders get better, everyone wins, including your team and the customers sure. that you want, for sure. Well, this has been a real delight, Mark, to, to hear from you, to learn a bit about you, and um, definitely need to come down and try the fish and chips and maybe go over to the Pine Room. Yeah, you definitely do. We're looking forward to it. It was great chatting okay. with you. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon.